Yes, uh, Karen, and I, I think really there's, there's five key themes that we see emerging at DXC Technology. And a piece that we're releasing today, those five themes are really centered around, firstly, the esca escalation in the arms race in the cyber world, which is going to set to increase. Uh, and then secondly, around that geopolitical theme that you mentioned, I think the geopolitical motivated attacks are also going to increase. And then thirdly, around critical national infrastructure, uh, you know, you don't think of the, you, when, when the electricity fails, that that's necessarily down to a cyber attack, but there's a specific set of technology, which we call operational technology, which we're going to see targeted in an increasing fashion as well. Um, but there's other things. So, for example, the fourth theme in our piece in, that we're releasing today is around the metaverse. And as the metaverse matures and we see companies like ours, like DXC Net Technology, really embracing the metaverse and Microsoft and Meta maturing, uh, do we really know who we're talking to and what about the digital wallets we're using? And finally, when you put all of that together, it all adds up to all of those increasing threats mean that there's a, still a, a big demand and lots of opportunity for careers in cybersecurity. And at DXC Technology, we're really at the forefront through our Dandelion program about embracing neurodiversity to ensure that we really look as far and as wide as we can to find those next generation of cyber professionals. Comprehensive wrap up of what we're looking at across the board, but yeah. just digging a little bit deeper into the geopolitics here. Are there certain countries more at risk in 2023, as you see it, Western nations in particular? Well, the way I see it is that there's so much going on geopolitically. So if you think about it, there's, I think, over 70 elections that are coming up in 2023. And we've seen uh, elections being targeted in, in the past. Uh, by cyber, uh, cyber attackers, state-sponsored and criminals as well. Uh, and so I think there's going to be, n there's nothing specific to say that one country or the other is necessarily going to be targeted. I just think where there are those big events and there's big reason for targeting, then you know, different countries will target each other depending upon the types of events that are actually happening. Actually, just on that, um, would you do business? Do you do, you do business with China? We do business across the globe, and we're very much a global business. But we're but you don't do business with Russia, presumably. At the no, we're very careful about how we obviously assess our risks so and where we operate. I've got to be honest. If I was um, a Western company and I was using your security, I wouldn't want you doing business with the Chinese necessarily, or someone else who has over the you know who's been accused of and potentially could continue to practice state-sponsored cyber attacks. Yeah, absolutely. And so, what's really important? when we're looking at how we, uh, how we look at the, the risks across the globe is making sure that we are very mindful of where the technology comes from and that we're assessing those risks to ensure that we can really mitigate and, and ensure that we not only manage that risk appropriately and proportionately for our 4,000 customers globally, but also making sure that we comply with, with regulation as well. So clearly it's very obvious that there are risks associated with uh, well documented about Chinese vendors, for example, and other, uh, other countries which operate IT. And so we have to take that into account when we're providing services to our customers and making sure that we can offer services globally, but also manage and contain that risk that is, uh, is very apparent.